All right. Well, I appreciate you having me on. Let's rock and roll. Well, first of all, I mean, it's 2021. How are you doing? How is your year so so far? How is Anthony well, Scaramucci's year starting? Well, off? Listen, I mean, I'm trying to avoid COVID. I'm trying to have my family members avoid COVID, Anthony. Uh, it's great to be on with you. And it's great to be on with you, Anthony. I'm very familiar with Ben Zinga. Uh, your team has been to the SALT conference many times. And so uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun for me to be uh, part of the Benzinga community. And, uh, you know, look, I'm trying, I'm, I'm, uh, I want to get the vaccine so I go back to Italy, you know, <laughs> and that's basically my goal, right? In the meantime, though, uh, we had our asses kicked in March of 2020. We've had I'm glad you brought it up. I was going to ask that, but I didn't want to. No, it's all yeah. good. I, I, I'm a big boy. I'm allowed to, I, I know how to talk about losses. I know success and victories. You know, I talk about my White House firing. That was a brutal day. <laughs> Can um, I just I've ask also, you real I've quick? Because I was, I've also had some successes too. You know, I was gonna wait to the end of the interview because I want to talk about Bitcoin um, yeah. first and foremost. But I gotta ask you because I, I, I read your Twitter and it makes me laugh. You gotta be somewhat blessed, or do you feel somewhat blessed that you were not part of that? sinking titanic ship for a well, while you know look i mean i look I'm, I'm a straight shooter i tried to stay loyal to mr trump i i got fired i said something that an italian would say from new york about somebody That's i right. said it to a fellow italian i thought it was somebody that was a friend of mine that was my mistake he ran to cnn with it yeah uh, and so i got fired for it and i deserve to be fired so i never once said to anybody oh, it was someone else's fault other than mine, I'm fully accountable for my firing. And so I tried to stay loyal to President Trump, but it became impossible. So, you know, you, you know you're separating women from the children at the border, you're denouncing our intelligence agencies, you're calling the press, the I mean, the people, you're spewing racial epithets at the women of the squad, the four Congresswomen that go back yeah. to the countries they originally came from. They said that to my Italian American grandparents in the 1920s, you know, this is a racist nativist tropes. I said, I'm sorry. I did hold my nose and stomach a lot of nonsense about Mexicans and a border wall and a Muslim ban. And those yeah. are the things I have to own for the rest of my life that I actually allowed myself to accept that. But there just became a red line in the system. And I said, I couldn't do it anymore. That was two years ago. So uh, yeah, I feel blessed, but also I acted on it. And so my message to people, you got a lot of young listeners that follow you around. My message yeah. to people is that it's okay to get something wrong. Don't stay wrong. Got something wrong, that's fine. But you gotta, if you're an investor and you've got a thesis and your thesis is not playing out, you're not, can't be emotionally welded to the right. idea. Get out of the idea. Recalibrate. Recalibrate. It doesn't mean you're quitting. It means you're recalibrating, you're pivoting, you're adapting. So, you know, it became increasingly impossible. I said there was something wrong with him in July of 2019, that proved to be true. There's obviously something wrong with him. He was uh, fomenting an insurrection on the nation's capital yeah. two short weeks ago. He's been impeached twice, once for criminality related to trying to bribe somebody related to one of his political adversaries. Good instincts on President Trump's part, by the way, because he was trying to knock out Joe Biden, who was the person that knocked him out. Yeah. But you can't do it illegally. And then secondarily, he was uh, fomenting an insurrection. He will go down in history as a domestic terrorist. So, but in the meantime, uh, we printed 23% more U.S. dollars in the last six months. So we have a 244-year-old republic. The dollar is still considered the reserve fiat currency for our civilization, our global civilization. But there's 23% more of them in the last six months than there was in the prior 244 years. And so you don't have to be a genius to know that something's wrong. And so what ends up happening is those dollars get printed, they get circulated, and then they start showing up in assets. Mickey Mantle card, $5.2 million. Uh, Palm Beach on the ocean, 50, 60, 70 million dollars. Yeah. Malibu Beach, $100 million. Uh, Penthouse apartments, even in New York City, that's gotten hammered, 50, 60 million dollars. And Maybe so a Hank Aaron card too. I know Hank Aaron, RIP. He just yeah, died. Well, I mean, he was a hero, American hero. Yeah. Uh, you have the $2 in 1971, the purchasing power of $100 today is equivalent to $2 in 1971. Hmm. 
And so I just want you, you, you got to think about that. And so what are we doing? This is why we have this uh, stress in our society and this social unrest. The rich are going to get richer. They own the assets. You print the money, the assets are going to be worth more in dollars. They own the assets. If you're printing the money, the poor can't catch up. They don't have any assets and their wages are never going to catch up to make it an aspirational society. You have to, you have to switch it. So to eight, 10 years ago, it's actually 12 years ago now, January, 2009, the yeah. uh, Satoshi Nakamoto white paper was written. Correct. Who was that? I don't know. It's anybody that claims that they're them is it's obviously not them. And so, you know, that was written and, you know, if you read through the paper, you say, okay, this is plausible. This could work. It's but it took proven. you, I saw something that said that it took you about two years to get comfortable with two, it. Two and a half years. Yeah. What, what happened in, in those two, were you just digesting it and taking it all in or was there something meeting in those two years with, that made you go, yeah, all right, sure. now I'm comfortable with it. Meeting with people, trying to understand the, the operating network, trying to understand the encryption and need to understand the why the integrity of the blockchain, why there's a finite supply, why it's mathematically impossible to have more than 21 million Bitcoins. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then just sitting down and doing uh, a lot of hard work on networks and making a decision that technologically, as our society is advancing, we're building digitized networks. We built one called Facebook. It's a digital social network. We built another one called Google. That would be a search and advertising social network. Right. We built one called Amazon. That's a retail network. You know, it's a one destination on the web, digital destination where you can shop. You can actually consume movies now. Yes. Uh, and you can have stuff delivered to your doorstep. Uh, and we can go on and on and on. And so our technology is proliferating. It's becoming more uh, intense, faster wider bandwidth. And so it would make sense that currency, money, a store of value would also be digitized and put somewhere on the web. And democratized, you said. And democratized, but also it has to be decentralized. And so just think about it, the word central, I think of banking, central banking. But Bitcoin decentralized, all of a sudden it has its own standardized principle. And because of its scarcity, it should eventually trade, in my opinion, to where gold is, if not a larger market gap than gold, because ultimately it has everything that you would want to have in a ledger. And all money really is, Anthony, is a ledger. And so if you go to wampum back in the day, seashells, pieces of paper in our pocket, digits in our computer systems, that's yeah. what we have. You know, and so therefore, to me, I am absolutely convinced, and I wasn't two and a half years ago. I said, it's an interesting concept. There's an interesting concept in 2014 when the coins were $400, but I like the coins better now at $33,000 versus 400 because the network is built. There's 140 yeah. plus million people using the network. And so therefore, the network is... Uh, the effect of that network should create a rising value for the coin as more people on board the network. So uh, is it is it realistic to compare it to gold? That was one of the questions from our readers. Is, is it, it keeps getting compared to gold. And then you have naysayers like Mark Cuban. I don't know if his opinions changed in the past couple of months, but he said he would rather invest in bananas. <laughs> but obviously you you wouldn't agree with that. Well, I think I think Mark is a is is a realist he's a very smart investor i certainly don't like betting against mark i didn't i didn't hear that quote about him investing in bananas I, i've seen him go back and forth with people on twitter to related to bitcoin he strikes me as a bitcoin skeptic but not, skeptic, a, yeah. not a bitcoin denier uh, i think he's owned the coins from time to time i don't know if he owns any right now but my my comment to mark would be well you know you got 140 million people that own Bitcoin, they've accepted it as a value transfer. Right. And if that goes to 280, you know, you know, yes, it will start having the features of digital gold. Now, some people don't like that. They say, oh, all that is is a code and that code is worthless. 
uh, but it's not worthless. And, and it's just like your money is not worthless. It's in your pocket. It's a piece of paper. Uh, that Mickey Mantle card is a cardboard piece of paper that was printed in the 1950s. There was four color process ink put on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. You can't really do anything with that card. I guess you could burn it for 1.1 seconds. I mean, maybe it has a caloric value that way, but it doesn't have any real value other than it's something iconic and it's something scarce and it's something that people will say, okay, wait a minute. I think that that's worth something. You know? Well, and I noticed that you have a, a Superman comic cover hanging on your wall. I'm a big Superman fan. Comics yeah. are certainly something that, especially from that, that era. I mean, I'm, I had a, yeah, so a late, un, my late uncle had action comics, number one. And do you have an appreciation for things that are, that are scarce and well, I, I hard to find? I don't own action comics number one, but you could have bought action comics number one. When I was a kid, you probably could have spent on an action comic number one in 1975, 5,000 US dollars. Wow. I think the mile high collection, that's the ones that were left in Denver and very low moisture in somebody's basement. So they're creamy white pages. They're probably worth four and a half to $5 million today. Yeah. So $5,000 to 5 million. Yet all that is, is ephemera but it represents part of our zeitgeist and it represents the, bil the billion person story related to Superman or maybe the 5 billion person story. You know, if we took Coca-Cola right now and we destroyed every bottling plant and we shut down every truck and we blew everything up uh, and I went to a group of bankers and said, well, I have this name called Coca-Cola and I have this formula is, uh, could we get this thing started? Could I raise some money to, to build a plant and you would find money for it. So there's something just about the brand, you know, there's something about a website, cars.com, uh, amazon.com, that name is now worth a fortune. But the uh, Bitcoin name, so that, that being said, like looking at um, digital currency, Bitcoin has the name, would you sort of explore investing in altcoins, sort of like I don't know, Soldier Boy did recently. And I think a lot of investors look to altcoins because yeah. they can't get to the Bitcoin. I don't, I don't, I don't want to rule out altcoins. I don't want to rule out things like Ethereum and other things. I think they have properties like Bitcoin, but I think that Bitcoin has slayed all the other coins to be in the pole position to have it standardized, to have it be considered a store of value. Uh, and, and again, Bitcoin is, you tell me the day, but let's call it 600 to $800 trillion in market cap. At 42,000, it was $1.1 $1 trillion in market cap. But at those levels, any of these networks that have scaled over 100 billion, they've become the network. Yeah. You know, there was Lycos and Ask Jeeves and Yahoo, uh, they were thumped by Google. There was MySpace and connect friends and things like that thumped by Facebook. And so this is something that had 6,500 different individualized competitors attacking it. And it was, it was successful. And there's something to be said about being the, the first to invest in something. And, and you said something that was interesting that um, we're in the early innings of Bitcoin. Uh, do you see like sovereign wealth funds and institutional investors? Are they, once they start getting in now, um, others are going to follow, right? So it's, yeah, it's, well, is it's it going to be a race now? It. Anthony, it's already happening. You know, you've got BlackRock saying, yes, we've approved. Vanek is saying they've got two different uh, fund products slated for SEC approval related to getting ETFs. Uh, you've got Michael Saylor on February 4th and 5th. He's the CEO of MicroStrategies. He's got $2.7 billion of his cash reserves in Bitcoin, and he's hosting a conference that's going to be attended by three or 4,000 CFOs from around the nation and the world that are going to hear from him and a group of people why Bitcoin should be on their balance sheet. Hmm. Uh, it shouldn't just be cash and U.S. treasuries. They should own some Bitcoin on their balance sheet in addition to give them more, more flexibility and an uh, integral store of value. So... Uh, this stuff is starting to happen now and you're starting to see that exponential liftoff and it's easy to store now. We can store our stuff at Fidelity. It's in cold storage. It's off the grid. Uh, you could go to Coinbase, but it's a little clumsy. Mm -hmm. You've got issues related to security on Coinbase. You can get fished. 
if you've got the if you've got the coins on your phone, someone could do a SIM card swap. Next thing you know, they own your coin. Right. And so you you've got to be very careful. But uh, we are in the world of digital currency now. Some of those will be survivors, but clearly Bitcoin in my mind is the one that's won the battle after 12 years of getting uh, attacked. And what I would say is think about Amazon, 12 years in Amazon, it looked great. People say, oh, wow, I missed Amazon. But if they bought it 12 years ago, the company's 24 years old. If they bought it 12 years ago, they've had a 65X move in Amazon. Hmm. So I think something comparable is going to happen to Bitcoin. If I'm right, if we're right, those coins could trade at $500,000. That would give them you know, market capitalization akin to gold. You know, if you go 10 times where we are right now, you're at 6 billion. So, you know, eight, nine, 10 times, you know, you're getting there, right? So how do you, when eight you times, meet with- so you're, That's your number. You, the, the minimum to invest with you is, I had the number somewhere, was it- was it's it 50,000. 50,000. Yeah. Well, you know, people have come in, people have called me and said, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna average in 25,000 a month. We've waved those people in. Yeah. Uh, I tried to pick a number that was low enough where I could make it accessible to a lot of people. I wanna democratize access to it. Our fees are 75 basis points. That's the lowest cost for what we do. Uh, the only negative to our platform is we have a three month lockup. So you can't really come in and out of Bitcoin with us. You can't trade Bitcoin. Right. We're recommending to our investors, this is a buy and hold strategy. And the reason why you can't trade Bitcoin is because we want there to be an infinite number of people that we can put in the fund. And from an SEC regulatory perspective, you can't trade investment partnerships. So the shortest duration that you can have in the United States where you don't get snagged by the IRS is three months. Yeah. So I've had people send me, well, I don't like it because there's a lot of volatility in Bitcoin. If I want to get out, I won't be able to get out. You know, you're, you're making me wait. It's uh, 90 days locked with 30 days notice. And my response is, well, you're probably not the right investor for us because okay. we for people to buy and hold the Bitcoin alongside of us. Uh, Grayscale has a 2% fee. Grayscale is charging a 20 to 30% premium to get into their trust. Right. You don't have that. You own these coins at their net asset value on the day that we're purchasing them. And then you have this fee that you're paying us, help us keep track of everything. We have an accountant, Ernst and Young. You have our service desk that can ask questions or help you add to your position. And of course, you've got the scold, the cold storage. At Fidelity. So we think it's a very inexpensive way to hold Bitcoin. And so it's, it's interesting when you said um, if you're probably not the right investor for us if they don't feel comfortable with the holding period. Yes. Uh, is that is it just as simple as that? Or do, is, is there something that you tell these potential investors to warm them up to it? No, I, I, I'm a pretty straight up guy. You go to skybridgebitcoin.com and we've got everything up there. The pluses and minuses, the advantages and disadvantages of being in our fund. And we've got interviews with me and Michael Saylor or other luminaries in the Bitcoin space. Uh, we did a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, just explaining our research and explaining why we like it. Yeah. And so for all of those reasons, I'm very optimistic. I think that uh, we're closing in $100 million. Now we're, we've only had the fund open. It'll be three weeks this coming yeah, Monday. Yeah, it's right out of the gates. January 4th, we put 25 of our own money in. Funds up a little, but we're getting a lot of new assets. People saying, okay, I'm telling my clients straight up, you have an opportunity. If we're right, you're going to get in ahead of these big institutions. You certainly want to be in ahead of the ETF. Yeah, That's where the exponential explosion and demand will come in. And so come with us for now and catch that ride. You don't want to be, you don't want to be waiting for Bitcoin to have a 15 basis point ETF, but the coins are $100,000. Buy the stuff with us right now, and take the ride to that destination. Do you? Um, I have a, one of the questions from our readers. Uh, do you see more companies following in MicroStrategy's footsteps and investing a part of their reserves in yeah. Bitcoin? Yes, I think you'll see a lot of announcements before the end of the first quarter of companies that have put Bitcoin on their balance sheets. What do? You, what else are you optimistic about? What am I optimistic about? I'm optimistic about the country, the democracy held. I'm optimistic directionally that we can heal the country. You can put down the anger in the country, rebuild the economic base of the country. I'm very optimistic about that. 
I'm optimistic about the abundance that's going to be in the world over the next two decades as we move towards less carbon and more solar and non uh, carbon based energy, more renewables, if you will. Well, that, that, and that's something that President Biden has been talking about. Not, you didn't hear much of that from his predecessor. So I guess my question for you is what markets are you you're, bullish you're about? Changing guard, you have a changing of the guard going on right now. We really understand Republican politics. You could look at Stu Stevens' book. Uh, it was called, It Was All a Lie. And he's basically saying in the book that the Republicans tried to suppress the vote in the South. They used racist dog whistles to get people to their side. And it was a mistake because what ended up happening was the society grew away from the Republicans. The Republicans look like a group of uh, aging white people mm -hmm. that are watching Fox News and buying catheters and my pillows at Fox News commercial interruptions. And so if they, I mean, that's not the way to run a party. You got to expand the party, make the party look more like the beautiful mosaic of the American people, expand the opportunity set for people in the party, refresh the party's ideas. I think, I think Mr. Trump has crippled that party and has now put that party in a position where it has to do that. And so you'll have some last gasps of Trumpism right now, but I think leaders will emerge in that party that are visionary and that will want to help knit and meld the party back together. I think that'll be very positive for America. So I have a lot, a lot of things that I'm optimistic about. Yeah. I, I feel like um, so there are certain Republican leaders too that poo poo certain industries. And as a guy who's uh, an, an investor and a, and a renowned one at that, don't you think that there's uh, they're missing out? They're missing the big picture on say, not investing in renewable energy or, or cannabis. We had a, a, the cannabis industry. It's a big, Part of our coverage on Benzinga.com, uh, sure. it did really well on election day. Cannabis ETFs are doing well. Um, do you think that they're not? It, had they had they been more with the times, maybe they could have got more voter support because, and, and rather than rejecting what is essentially bipartisan support for renewable energy and, and cannabis. Yeah, I mean, so the answer is yes. But I think you are seeing something happen in the cultural zeitgeist, meaning uh, the tyranny or the control by whites versus other parts of the society is ending. So you're seeing the last gasps of that, and that's why there's some level of violence, and that's why there's Donald Trump. He's an avatar of the anger of that. Yeah, I think that to really be quintessentially American is not to whine about that, but to seek a renewal. At every point in America's historic life cycle, uh, we've had this absorption, this assimilation, and this re renewal. We don't have to reject Anglo-Saxonism, but the flip side is why do we have to reject other hyphenations of Americans? In fact, I would say Rather than us saying America first, how about first we are Americans? How about we're Americans first? Let's drop the hyphenation, let's drop the tribalism, drop the party affiliations and focus on what makes us stronger together. And so uh, the Republicans have to do that. They have to rebuild themselves. They can't stay in the position that they're in now. They won't win. Rough 2020, what are your feelings for 2021? Why should an investor join Anthony Scaramucci and, and Skybridge? Well, because a revolution is happening. You know, the fiat currency is exploding. Uh, there's a revolution that's happening. The digitization of the society is continuing. Fi the introduction of 5G and other things on the web. The COVID-19 has accelerated our virtual experience like the one you and I are partaking in right now. And the money is going to get digitized. And you have something that got digitized 12 years ago. It has a substantial advantage and a head start over everything else. And it has become standardized and it's going to have a place in the future. And I'm telling people, you don't have to have 10% of your money in it, but how about a half a percent or 1%, something small. Mm -hmm. Because if we're right, if you missed Amazon and said, gee, that I want to buy it at this price, then it went up 64 times. If you miss Google or miss Facebook, remember, all those things traded sloppily with high volatility in the beginning. Yeah. If we're right, you're going to be like, okay, yeah, I don't want to miss the monetary standard of the future Bitcoin. We're at the early stage of it. I'd like to catch it. And it's an easy place to do it in Sky. Excellent. Well, Anthony, thank you for uh, joining us today. Right, good, good to be here. I'm digging the hair, man. You got some serious <laughs> hair there.
<laughs> Thanks, right, man. Italian chia pad. Okay, I'm digging that here. <laughs> Have a great weekend. You too. Take care, sir.